Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word, Proverbs chapter 6, and it's really divided into two sections. I love this first section. Uh, maybe that's because I, I love to work and I want to work hard. Um, and that's really where this first part is. It's a warning against folly and the folly of apath- apathy. The folly against not working, especially on relationships. Relationships that are severed, relationships that have walls of being able to do the work, do the good work, especially when it talks about your neighbor, uh, the neighbor that needs that relationship with you uh, so you can care for them, so you can speak to them, so you can step towards them, uh, making sure that there is wisdom in the reality of you being able to step towards them, have the understanding of that there isn't division in amongst that relationship. And then Proverbs goes back to see, uh, speak about relationships, especially in the marriage. Um, so we have Proverbs chapter 6, a father to his son, once again, just for these next couple chapters, of being able to speak towards uh, the wisdom and knowledge and, and the experience going forward, um, but also God speaking to us. Proverbs chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Let's read together. My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you have struck hands in pledge for another, if you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth, then do this, my son, to free yourself, since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands. Go and humble yourself. I just love that first part. We we would, a lot of times in our world, um, react in certain reactory ways, right? Being able to make sure that we're top level, that we're going to be uh, the ones that are going to be propped up um, and hear the wisdom of this father to his son saying, if you've used words in a certain way, if you're in a division with your neighbor, go humble yourself. What did I bring to this problem? Reflect on that for a while, it says here. Go and humble yourself. Press your plea with your neighbor. If you want to have that relationship with your neighbor, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to step forward with? Um, Not to just take it all to the chin um, if there is division there, but being able to say, what do I bring towards this relationship? But here is that action being taken, right? It says, go humble yourself. Press your plea with your neighbor. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Isn't this interesting how he's going to all the parts of creation, um, being able to speak about their gifts? Well, the ant is a hard worker. Uh, Don't let the sun go down. Don't let uh, the eyelids get heavy on the work that you need to do to be able to bring together a relationship right? Don't be apathetic, but rather be a worker for relationships. Uh, It says, go to the ant, you sluggard, consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a bandit, and scarcity like an armed man. A scoundrel and a villain, who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who winks with his eye, signals with his feet, and motions with his fingers, who plots evil with deceit in his heart, he always stirs up dissension. Therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. There are six things the Lord hates seven that are detestable to him. Number one, haughty eyes. Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devises wicked schemes. Number five, heat feet that are quick to rush into evil. Number six, a false witness who bears out lies. And number seven, a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. Six things, seven things, 
detestable to the Lord. And has everything to do with, as we have a relationship with God, he actually puts into place us not walking down those paths. He's spoken to that in the last chapter of Hottie Eyes. He's spoken to this right now of being able to speak towards honesty and being able to actually work towards that. Being able to understand, excuse me, that there are purposes in our lives as disciples of Jesus, as children of God, that we're slow to walk the path of the world, that we're honest, humble, it just continues to lay before us. And then chapter six goes into that other side as well, speaking towards relationships once again, um, and just really speaks towards that temptation of that sexual immorality. Verse 20 speaks this way. My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For these commands are a lamp. This teaching is a light. And the corrections of discipline are the way of life. Keeping you from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of the wayward wife. Do not lust in your heart after her beauty. Or let, your, let her capti captivate you with her eyes. For the prostitute reduces you to a loaf of bread, and the adulteress preys upon your very life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So, is he who sleeps with another man's wife? No one who touches her will go unpunished. Men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger when he is starving. Yet, if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it costs him all the wealth of his house. But a man who commits adultery lacks judgment. Whoever does so destroys himself. Blows and disgrace are his lot, and his shame will never be wiped away. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept any compensation. He will refuse the bribe, however great it is the implications of sin. And this is where that chapter six really does w work together, right? If you have stepped forth in any kind of sin, any kind of dissension, any kind of division, any kind of reckless behavior in and amongst a relationship, it says, humble yourself. Do work, do the work of God. Do the work of God, right? It's detestable and six things that God hates, but um, he, he definitely doesn't want you to have a haughty eyes or lying tongue, and then all of a sudden it amounts to sin. Always wants to make an excuse for itself, but rather humble yourself. Do the work of honesty. And as you walk forth in that honesty, walk forth in the path of God, that being able to actually do the work of not dissension, not division, but rather unity. Sin always amounts to consequences. Honesty, the walk of righteousness, always amounts to consequences as well. The consequences of walking upright, walking honestly, not having to bear the weight, as it says here, the punishment or the weight, um, uh, the, the humility of just being a loaf of bread. But rather, that's what sin actually places upon our shoulders. And so that's a beautiful thing as Jesus comes to us, as the body of Christ comes to us, as accountability comes to us. Humble ourselves. Repent of our sins. Don't wear them around your neck. Uh, don't let them uh, have a burden upon your shoulders, but rather confess. Repent. Be forgiven. Walk in the way of the Lord. The commands of a father and a mother to their son. How beautiful it is to wear those around your neck. Have that joyful burden of the commands of walking in a pure, holy, honest, and righteous life. You have that through the confession, repentance, and forgiveness of Jesus. And so, Holy Spirit, do your work in us. Let us not walk the path of sin, but rather the path of righteousness for God's glory and praise. Have a blessed day as you walk with the Lord.